Hi guys, as you've probably seen from the title, I'm going to be showing off my 16-bit adding calculator. Now I do think it's the smallest 16-bit adding calculator on Bedrock, but obviously if somebody else out there has made one before me, I can change the title and stuff and give them credit. But I've spent hours looking for one, and I've only found one other 16-bit adding calculator on Bedrock. And if you guys are wondering on the area of this calculator, it's 100,000 and 100 blocks. This was calculated by going to the farthest X coordinates, the farthest Y, and the farthest Z. I just wanted to let you guys know that's how I'm basing this off of. Okay, with that out of the way, let me just show it off. So, as you can see from the front, it's kind of small. Obviously, I got 33 levers, 16 plus 16 bits, and then the starting, and then I got a 7-segment display, obviously. So, obviously, we're going to have to start off with the most important test, 1 plus 1, which I hopefully know you know the answer to, which is 2. And bang, it knows it's 2 also. And I should also probably stop using that saying, considering what's happening in schools. And before you guys worry, I do have an overflow bit, so technically it's 17 bits. So if I add the two 16 bits, it will still solve it. So, as everyone knows, 32,768 plus 32,768. And then if I fly all the way over here and just click solve, we'll get the answer. Which anyone can do off the top of their head is 65,536. Simple. And now let's do an equation you're all dying to know the answer to. 69 plus 420. I know you guys want this because this is the most asked question for this calculator. Which is pretty easy. It's 489. Also, before you go in the comments being all triggered on how long it takes to solve this. Okay, I wasn't going for speed. I was going for how compact it is, which is going to slow it down. And if you're really triggered on how slow mine is, how about you go build your own? Better yet, if you make your own... Send me the link and I'll watch it. You better not rickroll me. And to help you with this feat of making a calculator that is 16 bits, I have some videos in the description that will help explain parts of it, like double dabble, the adding, you know, all the simple stuff. And you know what? Don't get triggered on my controller's drift, okay? It's gotten like this because of making this calculator. That's what this has done to my controller. So right now I'm just basically selecting all the levers, so that basically this is the highest number it can have because it's 16 bits. So basically, if you just did 32,768 times 2, subtract 1, that would be the top number. And then add that basically on itself. And that's what this is going to do. Which obviously is quite simple and anyone can do it. And now you can see the calculator is calculating the answer. And it can calculate your math homework's answer. And you're going to get 131,070 as your answer. As you can tell, this calculator is always correct. And since it's always correct, before I show off the redstone here, okay, I'm going to, you should follow the calculator's instructions and subscribe, please. It would help out a lot, and I'd actually see if you guys actually like this kind of content, because it takes forever to make calculators and stuff like this. All right, let's go into a showcase of the redstone. Okay, now it's time for the explanation on how this thing works. So to make an easy reference of where the levers are, I'm just going to break these two blocks right here. So you know it's just one block to the side of them. Okay, now with those two references, we can kind of tell better on these looking at these little units here, of these little solving units. So basically, as you can see, there's no signal coming out. And that's because 0 plus 0 is inputted. Okay, but if I flick the top lever on, now it's 1 plus 0. And you'll see it makes this redstone top on, 
which goes in the repeater, which then goes in this redstone, which goes in the comparator. So it has one signal outputted, which is in the first bit. But it also turns this redstone torch off, which doesn't do anything yet. And then also, if you just make it 0 plus 1, you'll see on bottom the redstone's on, which goes through a repeater, which then turns the comparator on, also turning the redstone torch off. But that's an AND gate, so it's not going to really affect it, and it's only got one bit output in the first bit. But what you'll notice is when I have both bits on, basically it's going to have to be 1, 0, because that's what 2 is. And so, yes, it has both these signals right here, sending a redstone signal, which goes to the comparator, but it also has an AND gate, which turns both the torches off, and since both the torches are off, it's going to also turn on this redstone torch, which is going to cancel the comparator, making it have a zero output in the first bit, but also carries on the bit to another system, which is going to check to see if there's a signal in the second bit. And as you can tell, that signal goes right to this comparator, which is basically, even though this torch is off, it's because it's inverted the signal because of the AND gate I have here to start the system. But as you can tell right here, it's on. While the first bit has an on output, which is just getting inverted back to off again. So you might be thinking, okay, but what happens if a bit in the second place is selected? Because basically then that will make the bit have to go to the third bit spot because 2 plus 2 basically is 4. And basically I have another module here for this bit. And as you can tell right here, the top one is selected, but it gets carried to the comparator, but there's nothing canceling it. And that's because only one of the redstone torches is off, the other is still on, which then inverts to making it off, which so it will run into this thing. And basically, it's just another module, but it's kind of designed slightly differently. And as you can tell, the torches on both sides are off, which goes down this redstone line, which turns this one on, which cancels this comparator, while sending a signal to the next module over to the left. Now, I wouldn't have actually figured out how to do this on my own without Kiro Geary Xbox's help. From what I can find online, he's the only other person that has made a 16-bit adding calculator on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So if you want to go check out his video or his channel, the link will be in the description. Now this logic basically works, is basically, if there was two bits, they would have already rounded up. So basically, I'd only need two modules here. With my old design, I had like a pyramid of modules, and trust me, it was huge. I'm only going to show this for the sake of progress, okay? Please do not roast me on this. I know, it's huge. Anyway, let's get back to the video before you guys can roast me on that. So as you can see, once I have both the second bit selected, as I was talking about, you'll see that it's actually going to cancel out this comparator too, so it's actually going to bring this one to the next one. And so it's just going to select both bits. And I didn't take that into consideration when making my original design. And this works because the second module here is only reading one from both of these, so it's just going to display one because there's nothing to cancel out. Because if you think about it, if I rounded up one and then I also rounded up the next digit, they're not going to affect the same modules. They're affecting different modules. And so basically, if there's a ton of ones and then there's just adding one to it, it's just basically going to carry this signal all the way across. It's just going to keep checking to see if there's two to carry over. And basically, the start lever actually runs after the calculation. So basically, it just inverts the answer and it's an AND gate. So basically, once it's off, since the torches are on, it's not going to display anything. Once it's on, though, it's actually going to be an AND gate, and the ones that have both off will display on. And then it carries these bits all the way across, which is basically 6 in binary, which will end up getting put into my double dabble machine, which this is combinational. Now, if you don't know what double dabble is, it basically is converting binary to BCD, which is just basically decimal but 4 bits per decimal place. And basically, the rules of it is if the number is 4 or below, it's just going to be displayed as that, but shifted over one. If it's 5 or higher, you just add 3 to the number, and that's just what this entire thing is doing. And don't you guys worry, I know that's a terrible explanation, I will have videos in the description to help you out with it. Now the reason this is shaped like a pyramid, kinda, is basically you want the first bit, which is like the 16th bit, you want that to be implemented first. That's why it's going outward, so it's going to the lower after and after. And basically, there's these four bits inputted, and it's just basically, you know, the system. And then basically I have a manual input of what it should display, basically, when it gets that input. So basically it just got a 1 to 10 decoder here. So basically if it's 1, you know, it's this, it's that. And if it's 1, it carries over. 2, it would just carry over. 3, it carry over. You know, so forth. So as you may know, binary 10 is just 1010. 0, 0. But obviously, that's not 10 in decimal. 10 in decimal is 1, 0. So we have to convert it to its 10's place instead of 2's place, because that's how binary works. So if we follow the wires of the solving module, you'll see that it goes 1, 0, 1, 0, and they get carried all the way to the end over here. 
with this first module saying it's a 1, so it's going to carry it right over. The second module says it's a 2, so it carries over, because that's less than 4. This one right here, though, it's got 5, which is more than 4. So we add 3 to it, making it 8 in binary. So as you can see, though, it's the fifth one up. It's turned off, which then turns the redstone lamps on, which then has this 1 signal, which just carries all the way back. But you see, in BCD, it's 4 bits to display per decimal. So the first 4 bits are off displaying a zero, and then this grouping of bits just has a one in it, which would convert to one in decimal, which as you can see right here, these are my four bits to decimal converters for the seven segment display. So it's just converting these four bits into the seven segment display so that you can see the number. Okay, so I'm basically gonna show you how it works with four. Okay, so as you can see, we inputted four and it's displaying four on the screen. Now I might be wondering, how does this work? That's because if you look over here, it's inputting the third bit, which is a value of four, which then goes to this four bit decoder. And as you can see, this is basically zero, one, two, three, four, because it decoded four. That's what four needs. It needs for this number to be on and then the other three numbers to be off. And I just do this with redstone torches and repeaters. Okay, so this is my design. Now, obviously you could make this slightly bigger and it'd be way quicker. But as I've said, I want this to be small as possible. Now these torches, you might be wondering, what do they represent? They're actually basically saying what lines are on in the seven segment display. So as you can see, when we go down here, if there's a torch here, top left, top middle, you know, basically so-and-so. Basically, if there's a torch there, that's what part on the seven segment display is going to be on. And so as you can see, I just carry that signal from these spots over to the seven segment display. And as you can see, some are lit up and some are off because for that number to be represented, it does not need that to be lit up. And as you can see, the wires go straight to their assigned spot on the 7-segment display. But spots like this, basically I invert it because there's redstone torches here. So I just in it's basically inverting it and then inverting it again. And that is how we end up with the answer 4. Now if you've been watching my video closely, you'll notice that I actually don't have a BCD converter here to decimal. And that's actually because the double dabble rate under here is in the way, so I actually wouldn't be able to fit one. And since I didn't want to lose space on this design, because I'm trying to make it as compact as possible, I just carried these four wires all the way around over here. Which I know is technically not efficient and is not saving space, but since it's inside, it's fine because I don't want it to stick out and then take up more space. But it carries the wires all the way over here to the converter, which is just located over here, which then has the seven wires just outputted and then carried all the way over to that display. And obviously, this is just the same thing as the other ones. It just converts it, and then as you can see, there's the seven wires, and then they get all tangled up, carried all the way through here to its display unit right over here. And that's basically my 16-bit adding calculator. Now, obviously, there's lots of room for improvement on making it smaller. Now, if you're talking about binary to binary solution, this little area in here is all that's solving it. Now, this wire out here, basically from this area that just basically connects the two extra bits, all the way over here, all the rest is used to convert it to decimal. So if you just consider that small area is solving it, and the rest, like this double dabble here, is just converting it to decimal for the segment display. And as I was saying, there's tons of room for improvement because like, basically my solution, this is all handmade. So my solution basically here, anyone could probably make that smaller because I basically designed this entire thing. I watched videos on how to understand it, but I designed each part individually. And obviously, I didn't just watch a video like, oh, do this, do this, do this. Okay, I actually learned how the modules work, and then I designed my modules to fit this. Now, obviously, there is a smaller double dabble if you really want to make your smaller. And let me tell you, okay, it is possible, but here's your forewarning. This is when I try to do serial double dabble for the 16-bit adding calculator. And here's me deleting hours of work making this double dabble system and trying to figure out what was wrong with it and never figuring it out. Back to the drawing board, I guess. And that's when I just chose to stick with combinational. Okay, well, I hope you guys like the explanation and me showing off my 16-bit adding calculator. On the left is my most recent upload. And on the right is the subscribe button, which you should definitely click on if you haven't already.